Good day and welcome to IMPACT, a community affairs discussion program from the College of Arts and Sciences at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. I'm Jeff Frederick. On average, the acceptance rate into med school runs about 40% give or take each year, making entry into med school demanding, competitive, and grueling. Virtually all the applicants have high test scores and excellent grades. Many have a long list of volunteer hours or research accomplishments. The MCAT test itself takes over six hours to complete. So if on average 50,000 apply each year, about 20,000 start. Success rates are pretty high, however, with over 80% graduating in four years and over 90% graduating in five. About 25,000 students are enrolled in the 66 accredited American Dental Schools. The 142 accredited pharmacy schools are split somewhat equally between private and public institutions. Healthcare professions, given the growth of the population, the innovations produced by research and technology, and the goal of all of us seeking to live our best life, are very much in demand. In short, we can comb, sift, and sort the data a hundred different ways, but the fact remains the needs of the professional healthcare workforce are becoming increasingly acute, particularly so in rural areas like southeastern North Carolina, where the economic transition has been slow. My guests today are working each and every day to solve the health profession's workforce problem, bridging the gaps, and introducing greater diversity into the workforce. Joining me are Natalia Locklear, director of the UNC Pembroke Health Careers Access Program, and a couple of strong students, Jenna Locklear and Michaela Williams. A little later, we'll be joined by Dr. Angela McDonald, dean of the new College of Health Sciences. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Natalia, tell us a little bit about the Health Careers Access Program. How many students are part of it? What is your mission? How does it work? Sure. So the North Carolina Health Careers Access Program currently has close to 400 students on paper um, that are members and active members actually of our organization. Many of those students attend our health career club meetings. We meet every Tuesday at four. Those students are actively engaged in our community service projects and the mission of the organization is to essentially um, assist underrepresented minority students, students from small town USA, lower socioeconomic backgrounds, and first generation students and help them uh, obtain the goal of pursuing a career in the health profession. So you have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Yes, we do. We run the gamut. Um, we even have some post back students who are coming back and they've had that change of life. You know what? Healthcare is for me. Yeah, absolutely. So Jenna and Michaela, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? How long have you been here? What are you trying to, what's your health profession dream? So I'm a senior. I graduate in May and I actually transferred to UNCP when I was a junior and it was the greatest decision of my life. Uh, I am from Pembroke, North Carolina and my major is exercise and sports science with a concentration in exercise physiology. So I'm actually applied to physical therapy school and I'm just waiting to hear back from three more universities. So what is it about physical therapy that makes you feel like that's the career for you? Uh, I consider it an adult playground. You just get to help rehabilitate people and just see them grow and you get to grow alongside of them. You get to be a mentor. You get to guide them and show them that you will get better. And I currently work at a pediatric physical therapy clinic. So just working with kids and getting to see them grow has been the most humbling experience I've had. And physical therapists work with everyone from kids all the way up to senior adults, right? Yes, I have had the opportunity to work with geriatrics, regular students, regular adults, and kids. So I've got to see it all in different clinical settings. And it's just awesome to see the different techniques used for different ages. So your practice will be problem solving and puzzle solving on <laughs> yep. a daily basis. Yep, and it's so, it's so fun because each patient is different. So you have to do different techniques and you have to go about it differently because you may be injured and someone else may be injured and I can't use the same techniques on you that I would use on that same patient. So it's just fun. You get to think outside the box and think of new ways to rehabilitate them and get them back to their regular activities of daily living. So Michaela, what, what about you? Tell us your story. I am a junior here at UNCP. I've been here all three years now. I'm majoring in biology with future plans to go on to medical school once I graduate in May of next year. 
I'm actually a Brady Scholar, which means once I finish here at UNCP, I will be going on to the Brady School of Medicine at ACU. Um, my goal is to get my degree there and then go on to specialize in trauma medicine. And I would love to be able to bring those skills back here to Robinson County since we are so underprivileged when it comes to having trauma centers here. So when did you know you wanted to be a doctor? Well, both of my parents were paramedics. So growing up, I was around a lot of drama, if you must say that. So You've heard some stories. I have. <laughs> and when I graduated high school that summer, I went and got my EMT certification. So since then, I've been working as an EMT at Pembroke Rescue here in Pembroke, North Carolina. And I'm currently in paramedic school also. So being out in the field and seeing that, I just want to be a doctor because I know that even though you're first in the field in EMT and paramedic, there's so much more that has to be done. And I want to be that person who can do more. So as a trauma physician, were you working in like an emergency room? If here, if I was to come back to Robson County, I would be. Um, but say I went to Charlotte or Raleigh, there's a lot of top level, just basic trauma centers, which that would be an option I'll say. But my plan is to come back here, work at Southeastern and try to help boost that up to a higher level trauma center. So Jenna, as a physical therapist, would have something different every day, and you would have something different every right. hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And then when you're done uh, resolving their immediate problem, you'll send them over for some physical yeah, therapy. Right. So uh, I see you all working there together. Mm -hmm. Natalia, walk us through how HCAP gets involved with students from the very beginning. How do you impress upon them the needs, uh, even as an 18-year-old freshman, of what they will need to accomplish in order to be a 22-year-old heading off to graduate or professional school? Sure. So I'm not going to say that it's a, a scare tactic move, but at, to some students I think it may be. We actually sit down for the course placement and, and academic advisement, and I lay out the courses that they're going to need to take and in the order so, they, to, so that they understand the academic side. And then we start talking about the enrichment opportunities. So even as a freshman when they sit down or even as a first-time uh, first transfer student, we talk about every opportunity these students need to commit themselves to. So from the academic advisement, we talk about summer internships, whether they're academic based or clinical in nature. We also have our Health Careers Club, which is a part of that enrichment series. And uh, that's a networking piece because we bring in speakers from different walks of life, whether they are PTs or medical doctors or med schools, vet programs, et cetera. And those students have the opportunity to firsthand start developing those relationships. We also take students on professional networking trips to show them and encourage different opportunities for those students. Many of our students don't um, have the, the, the financial means to travel to various schools and programs, and by being a Health Career Club member and a part of NCHCAP, they're afforded that opportunity. Uh, we also assist with test prep, so when they come in and they're like, okay, when do I need to begin preparing for my standardized test? Whether it's the GRE for someone like Jenna, who's applying for a PT program, or the MCAT for someone like Michaela, we have necessary materials in the form of books and online resources. Um, in the past, we've held workshops. And then we also have other developmental workshops throughout the student's time. So even as a freshman, what do you need to be doing to get, to get prepared for your professional journey? What, what tips and what techniques? And then we have a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program to assist these students with understanding the life of a pre-health student. What's my journey looking like? So even as an 18-year-old, you're rubbing shoulders with doctors and nurses and all kinds of professionals who are working every day in healthcare. Does, did that help you all narrow down a little bit more about what you wanted to do? Definitely. Well, in high school I knew I always wanted to be a physical therapist, so coming and being a part of HCAP, it just solidified that that's really what I want to do, just being able to hear the physical therapist that she would bring in or that they would have hosting and talking to us about it. I was like, man, you know, they're so well knowledge and well versed in it. That just, that's exactly what I want to do. So that's how it's benefited me. And both of y'all were in an extensive summer internship program. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, the program for me, I was able to work at an outpatient clinic through Southeastern and I was able to work alongside two different physical therapists. And I was just able to rack their brain and ask them so many questions about how they do it and why do they do it that way? Why do you use that technique rather than this technique? And they also let us work with patients and let us do the, the icing and the uh, ultrasound and the Theragun. And so they let us actually do some hands-on work too. It just made it, just made it fun for me and just kept giving me clarification that that's what I wanted to do. And what was your experience like? 
I was able to precept under a nurse practitioner here at Pembroke Pediatrics here in Pembroke and that was an awesome experience for me even though pediatrics is far from what I thought I would be interested in. I thought it was an awesome experience. I got to do a lot of general peds but I also got to do a lot of children's gynecology which I didn't think that I would love but actually I understand now that even though I'm interested in trauma that affects peds too. So I did learn a lot that I know I'm going to carry into my career one day. And Natalia, you're responsible for setting up all these internships. Definitely. And the internship they're referring to is the, the Clinical Health Summer Program. And we host 14 different students. And so already we've, we've sent out preceptor agreement forms and contracts and letters of interest saying, hey, are you interested in hosting one or more of our students this summer? But yes, we do. And we're always interested in new partnerships. So what a tremendous opportunity. If you're already a student at UNCP and you're thinking about a healthcare career, you need to get involved in the HCAP program. And for those of you grizzled <laughs> veterans and experts about ready to head off, thank you so much for uh, talking a little bit about your experience here. Thank you for well, having thank us. You. Well, thank everybody. Uh, we'll return in a couple of minutes with more impact. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. We're doing it. I'm testing for HIV. Knowing your HIV status allows you to stay healthy. I do it for my sisters. To stay strong. For your partner. I care for my community. I do it to lead by example. We, we do, do it for love. love. And now it's your turn to get tested for HIV. It's fast, it's free, and it's confidential. Make HIV testing a part of your routine. Visit cdc.gov forward slash doing it. I'm doing it. Are you? Every year, airmen face overwhelming challenges. Fortunately, our airmen are resilient and help is available. Last year, 37,000 airmen had the courage to get help for themselves and others when they needed it. Because I had the courage. Because I had the courage. Because I had the courage to get help, I was able to help others. Because I had the courage to get help, I was the first in my family to get a college degree. Because I had the courage to get help, I married the love of my life and I got to meet the second love of my life. Because I had the courage to get help, I was able to see my son grow up. And because I had the courage to get help, another airman had the courage to get help. Care, connect, cope. And for all of those that you love and who love you, be there. Only 10% of us get enough daily exercise. And that number is dropping. Nearly 30% of us are overweight or obese. As a result, we now have a shorter life expectancy than our parents. But give us the right start in sports, and we'll never stop. Learn how at activeforlife.ca. Welcome back to Impact. For the first time in, gosh, a couple of decades, UNC Pembroke has a new academic college, the College of Health Sciences. And joining me is Dr. Angela McDonald, the Dean of the College of Health Sciences. So how do you launch a brand new academic unit? Yes, um, so it is our new, newest academic unit since 1999, and it's really an honor for me to, get part, to be part of it and to, to get to participate in this transition year for the new college. Um, it's really exciting. We have a lot of momentum behind us, a lot of people who are wanting to be involved. But for me, I think the most important thing that we have accomplished so far this first year is really helping the faculty, the staff, and the students to see themselves as part of a new academic unit and to understand what the impact of that will be on their research, their teaching, their student support services, and all of those things. Uh, one of the things that we did early on was to establish four working groups that bring faculty together from across the different departments that are in the college. So we've got them meeting on a regular basis to talk to each other about regional impact, which is so critical to UNCP's mission to make sure that what we're doing in the College of Health Sciences now and what we plan to do in the future is in good service to the region. Uh, we're also meeting faculty across departments on a regular basis to talk about teaching and learning, including existing curriculum processes, new opportunities for students, interprofessional education opportunities. Uh, we're meeting to talk about research and developing our research strategy for the college. There's a lot of opportunity there. 
And then finally, we have just a general transition team that's been meeting to make sure that we're honoring uh, our traditions that each of the departments bring into the new unit, as well as talking about some new opportunities to develop traditions that are unique to the College of Health Sciences. So it sounds like a just a collaborative venture. You mm -hmm. know, you are sort of plotting out uh, how all of this will work together. What are the departments that are already in the college and how do you see them continuing to work together? Sure, yeah, collaboration is a really important value to the College of Health Sciences. So the four charter departments that are going into the founding of the College of Health Sciences are the Department of Counseling, which includes school counseling and clinical mental health counseling. And that's your That's my home, home base, base in yeah. clinical mental health counseling. And um, so those are two graduate programs with about 200 students. We also have the Department of Kinesiology, and that includes exercise sports science, physical education, health promotion, sports administration. Um, really important department for some of the pre-professional health professional programs as well. Um, we have over 500 students in that department. We've got our nursing department, which has our RN to BSN program, the BSN program, the MSN program. Um, and so that's definitely a really important part of the College of Health Sciences is our, is our strong nursing department. And then finally, we have several hundred students in our social work department, which includes both the Bachelor of Social Work, the BSW, as well as the graduate program, the MSW. So UNCP is already approaching healthcare from so many different perspectives at the undergraduate level, in primary care, mm -hmm. as well as at the graduate level in very specialized care. Sure. So how do you envision some of those four charter programs continuing to work together as the college grows and matures? Well, I think they're, going back to collaboration, there's just a lot of opportunity for them to work together. One of the things I'm really proud of is just after one semester of being in the new college, these four founding departments work together to design a, um, a day of interprofessional education in our clinical learning center. So the faculty in three of our departments joined together, created some case studies, actually got uh, actors to play the different parts in the case study and brought students from um, all of our programs into mm -hmm. the learning lab and acted out this case study. So they were able to see wh what someone who was a patient who was going into hospice or what uh, a patient with a chronic medical condition, what that case would look like from the perspective of multiple professions. They were able to hear each other process. Because in reality, communication among specialists and care providers about patients and about cases is absolutely critical. That's right. The students are going out to do their internships and later in their work lives to collaborate with one another, to be part of integrated care, to do team-based care. So we want to bring that into the classroom to replicate that experience and get them used to working under that model right from the very beginning. Because that's where healthcare is going, that's right? Where it's Collaboration, going. Collaboration, interpersonal, interprofessional, community health. That's right, exactly. Absolutely. So where do our current graduates go to work? Do they stay here? Do they go across yeah. the globe? Well, some of them do go across the globe, but we're really excited that a vast majority of our graduates do stay in this area. And that's something that's really important to UNCP. These are good jobs that our students are seeking. The need is there, so it's a win-win situation for our alumni as well as the community in that these jobs are being filled by people who want to stay, work, and live in this region and give back to this region. So th we're in a region that has some pretty significant health outcomes and factor issues and mm -hmm. our workforce that we produce fortunately is already at work on those. Right. How, how do you make sure they all have the clinical placement opportunities to really practice what they're learning? It's very important to have an ongoing relationship with practitioners in the community, with hospitals, with nursing homes, with uh, extended care facilities, agencies, clinics, the schools. That's another location where a lot of our interns will, will be, providing lots of different types of care. And so the, these types of relationships do require ongoing communication. One thing that we're doing is looking at ways to expand out our professional development opportunities for those who help our students to have internship sites. So we're bringing them back onto campus and offering continuing education units and, um, and things like that to be able to make sure that we so you have a lot of partners that um, help provide practical opportunities for our students and mm -hmm. then you also on the back end provide opportunities for those partners to come get some mm -hmm. additional education from us. That's right. We have our very first symposium happening later this spring on April 15th where we're inviting some of those partners to campus and uh, we look forward to that event. 
And UNCP's hallmark is its diversity. We're mm -hmm. one of the most diverse institutions in the entire South. So how does that diversity going back into the community help get better outcomes for patients? Sure, definitely. Um, is an, the <coughs> diverse workforce in the healthcare industry is really important to improving healthcare outcomes. UNCP does have already a, a very diverse student population. By offering more and more of the types of programs that students are looking for right here on our own campus, we're able to continue to feed that pipeline with more and more diverse students, which is being able to match uh, providers with the types of patients that they're working with out in the community, and that's, uh, that's going to be very successful for us. And cultural appreciation of the presenting conditions that the patient deals with is really important for all healthcare providers, isn't it? It is. Culturally responsive teaching is something that, as we were creating our mission statement for the new college, was something that the faculty wanted to highlight, and I think that's well received. So you have these four dynamic departments that are already hard at work and collaborating mm -hmm. and setting forth on this great venture of a college of health sciences. What about the future plans? What new programs will be coming along? Well, I, I do want to give kudos to our four founding departments. They are really robust. The faculty have jumped on board. They've been very excited. Uh, and, and it will require their help to onboard some new programs over the coming years. Um, we're looking at the Department of Kinesiology as, as a starting place to explore occupational therapy and some um, physical therapy down the road. But first, occupational therapy. Even some of our existing programs are using this opportunity in the new college to look back at their current offerings as well. So we're seeing in nursing that they're looking at an accelerated BSN and developing that over this summer. Our counseling department has added an addictions counseling certificate that will help people to be licensed a clinical addiction specialists. So the, the growth and the new programs are happening in our existing departments as well as new programs that we'll continue to be bringing on board over the next coming years to make sure that we're meeting the regional need. What kind of facilities will we need in order to pull all that off? Wonderful facilities. We will need lots of facilities. Uh, the really neat thing about these, these training programs is that they all require a lot of experiential hands-on learning and that is a specialized type of space, specialized types of equipment. So we're going to be needing to look at where are we going to put a physical therapy program and all of the lab space that comes around with it. So you see this on our campus right now. It's a very exciting time. There's a, there's a lot of construction happening and health sciences is part of that future planning for that. And you're already doing an awful lot of simulation right mm -hmm. here on campus, right? Talk a little bit about that and how that works. Yeah, we, so we have a clinical learning center which has the four simulation labs that are currently used by the nursing department. With the creation of the College of Health Sciences, one of the things that we've been doing is opening up that clinical learning center for those prof interprofessional education opportunities, like the one I mentioned earlier. And so for the first time, we're starting to have other programs uh, learn what it means to have a clinical learning center. It's a very specialized type of learning environment. When students cross through the doors to that center, they think of themselves as professionals. The rules for that setting are consistent with what they would be out in the community in a real hospital setting. So it's setting. like they're walking into a hospital Absolutely. right here on campus. There's uniforms and rules, and, and, um, and it really gives them that opportunity to try on that environment and, and use those skills in a, in a real world setting. And what are some of the kinds of things that those simulators can actually do? What conditions can they mimic? Well, we have a lot of mannequins, and I think those mannequins can mimic pretty much any condition that, that you could come up with. They're very sophisticated, very high-tech mannequins, um, and so they can actually um, nearly die and be brought back to life for, by our students, which is a very exciting thing to witness when they're um, engaged in these learning experiences. Uh, there we have mannequins at all stages of life, so we do have pediatric, infant, and, and young children um, mannequins so that they can learn what it's like to, um, to, to stick younger clients or younger patients as well to. Uh, so there's all kinds of conditions, some very minor, maybe almost even non-existent, some very major and life-threatening, and you can simulate all of those so that before you're actually dealing with a real patient, you, you can actually deal with a, a, a simulator. That's right. Uh, one thing that we also have is in a, a home health care setting, we have an apartment so that the students can learn a little bit more about providing home health care. And, and that's really important, especially in the rural community that we're in. 
So just about anything you need to simulate, you can, and that allows you to sort of maximize the time that you spend on campus before you send students out to these partner locations. That's right. When our students go to the partner locations, when they go to the clinics and the hospitals, they're very prepared. They're already familiar with the equipment. They're already familiar with the procedures, and they're familiar with the environment that they're in, entering. And so that may, means that our clinical partners benefit from that early training. And talk a little bit about building a research culture into the new College of Health Sciences. What kinds of things do you hope to study? I am really excited about this. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity and potential for us to expand in our research uh, expertise as well as the externally funded projects that we engage in. Our faculty are really excited about this. I have one faculty member in particular who's working with me to develop the research strategy for the college. We're looking at some of the other universities that have longer established uh, colleges of health sciences to come up with some good ideas about what will work uniquely for UNCP. There's a lot of opportunity there, and in having these four particular founding departments, we have a really strong foundation to be looking at the social determinants of health, and so I think starting there is really a good opportunity for us. We, we already have some of our departments who had not previously collaborated submitting grants together right now for funded research projects. So the interprofessional um, care concept is mm -hmm. not only in terms of training the students with courses in curriculum material, but also on the research side. That's right. So faculty who are able to share their research expertise with people across campus that they maybe weren't previously working with are now able to design studies together, and, and that's really great. So final question, okay. very quickly. It's a time of tremendous amount of change. Yeah. How will you make sure that the new material that the college produces in terms of departments and programs is responsive to the way healthcare is changing so quickly? Well, we are doing, uh, uh, we're doing a lot of work to stay very engaged in what the community needs are and talking to our community partners on a regular basis, having a, forums for students to be able to come and tell us about what some of their hopes and needs are, staying connected to other rural health colleges of health science, and, and keeping on track with the trends in the area. But I think our most important goal is to make sure that we're meeting regional needs. And So good partners, good communication, right. good students, great founding departments, and ambitious plans for the future. And lots of collaboration. And lots of collaboration. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Uh, it's been great to, to have an opportunity to talk about uh, developing the healthcare workforce at UNC Pembroke. Thank you for joining us at Impact. Join us again next time.